guys uh, so welcome to this video where we will discuss about the circuit breaker and retry pattern in spring boot using resilience 4j so yesterday i posted one reel on circuit breaker but i feel that 90 seconds is very less time to understand the concept so i am making this video and lot of people commented also like uh, they are not able to understand in 90 seconds so let's start so this is the resilience 4j readme document right so their documentation is very good so you can go through it also so let's see the high level what is circuit breaker right so first you have to understand like circuit breaker comes under the fault tolerance umbrella right so whenever you have any application you want to make sure that your application is not failing in case of any system failures or you you are implementing retries bulkhead right so all these core modules you see right on the left side they comes under fault tolerance umbrella and for achieving all of this we use resilience 4j library and in this video we will implement circuit breaker and retry pattern specifically because these two are heavily used in production application so let's start with the circuit breaker so i will just explain you this diagram then i will show you the code demo and then we will see some of the theoretical part so what is circuit breaker right so circuit breaker basically have three states open closed half open and two special states disabled and forced open which are not being used uh, most of the times so we will see like how this works right closed open and half open right so the closed state right so closed state means everything is working fine right so you are calling one api and if your api is calling other service or database so everything is working fine so it's closed right now if failure rate is above some threshold right so then the state will become open and then it can become half open after it is waiting for some time and then it can again go to closed so basically it keeps like closed open half open closed open half open right so we will see the code example then you will be able to relate better i think in this uh, with this diagram so i will jump to the code example okay so here first thing you have to remember is in your pom.xml you can use resilience 4j library whatever is the latest so i'm using spring boot 3 uh, resilience 4j and i'm using 2.0.2 and if i go here right so implementing it is not a hard part you should be aware of the core concepts so here i have simply have the one get mapping url circuit breaker and then i am giving this tag right circuit breaker tag and i am mentioning the name of this circuit breaker like circuit breaker demo service because this name will be used in giving the properties of how this circuit breaker should behave and then i am giving the fallback method as get error circuit so basically fallback method if this api is not working right or giving me the error response then instead of having the white label error or other page right i am we should have some fallback method right that's the whole purpose of circuit breaker so here one thing you also one thing you always have to notice the the type right so here my type is string right so same type should be there for fallback method right now here i have created or calling one other api so i will run two projects in my local will run on 9090 port and this one will run on 8080 default so here if you see we are using circuit breaker demo service as a name right so if i go to my code so i am first thing i am saying is this is for health metrics url so it will be enabled true because i will show you how you can use this to see the state and other parameters and then you have to focus on these properties circuit breaker demo service dot first is first is register health indicator that is true then failure rate threshold is 50% so this means like if more than 50% requests are failing right or the threshold is above 50% then the circuit state should be open instead of closed so basically i will also demo you the properties as we progress in this video so i will just go to my browser so i will just restart the process or restart the program so that the metrics of the circuit breaker will get reset so now it's working fine so i will go here and you will see the test right so test service is working fine on 9090 port and 8080 i will call so you see the response is coming as expected right so now i have called it two times right so if i go to the actuator circuit breakers right url so if i will call this url it gives us the information related to how many calls are there how many uh, what is the threshold we set like 50% right so this is coming from the application dot properties file and how many calls got failed how many got slow calls not permitted right and state is closed so 
so if you see now the state is closed so if i will go to this diagram so if you see here right the state is closed because the failure rate is still below the threshold so no request have failed till now and total request are two right so now to demo you this circuit breaker how the state will change right so what i will do i will go to my sample test which is running on 9090 port and i will close this project right yes so once the project is closed you, i will hit the url you will see the 9090 local host is not working now so now interesting thing will happen uh, so now if i will call this one right so i will make one call it is going to the fallback method it is not giving me like 500 internal server error or something like this generic error right this site can't be reached so it is giving me proper fallback option whatever we have set up and then if i go to the metrics now you will able to see that the failed call is changed to one and the state is still close right because the failure rate is not yet more than 50 percent yet right or equal to 50 percent so if i will hit two more requests right one two so now if i will go here so you will able to see the state is open now right because failure rate is now 60 percent so out of five requests our first two requests was successful then what we did we stopped the service then other three requests were failed so now the state is open so now if I go to this right diagram here, so if you see failure rate above threshold, then the state will become open. And from open to half open, after wait duration, it should change from open to half open. If I show you this property, so we have wait duration in open state, five seconds. So now it's already more than five seconds. So if I will run, go here, right? So you will see the state became half open because from last 10 to 20 seconds, no request have failed right so it changed the state from open to half open according to this uh, diagram also right so now if you see no request have came right because state changed to half open but if i will trigger it again then the threshold is 100 percent right one out of one will fail so if i will go here so it's like one buffered call one failed call but the state didn't change to again half open to open right because we have mentioned in the properties that number of calls in half open state is three. So basically, if I will trigger two more requests here, one, two, right? So now if you will see here, the state should be open now and the threshold is 100% because all the requests are failing. We have not started the service yet, right? So if you see here from closed, it was open and from open, it was half open and from half open, it again went to open. but you have to set up this property according to your use case by default it is three permitted number of calls in half open state so now let's try to bring the state so now it's open now again after five seconds it should go to half open so i will trigger this it is again half open right so if you see this right it is being playing between open half open open half open right based on wait duration and based on the number of requests are failing right now let's try to see this scenario from half open to closed so now i will go and run my service again so i will go here and i will run the service again on 9090 local host so it's working fine so if i go here so it is giving me the response right so net now let's see the metrics first the state is half open and all the numbers are reset right but in the half open state we have given the properties permitted number of calls is equal to three right so if i will have one request it is successful right if i will go here it is still half open so i will trigger two more requests two three so three requests are successful now so as soon as they are successful state became closed and all the numbers are reset so now we saw like how the state went from half open to closed once the service is up and how we are using the actuator endpoint to see everything so in our code we can read the state and do all that things right and we can also set up this matrix in the dashboard so already now we already saw right how it is working close to open open to half open half open to open again open to half open and again half open to closed so this is how it will keep working right and the properties we already saw so, so this is count based sliding window basically only sliding window size is 10 right so it means it is storing the information of last 10 request so let's say if i trigger 5 6 7 8 9 10 request right so if you see here the perfect calls are 10 right but if i will hit it more right i am keep it i hit 10 more 
so you will see it is not going beyond 10 right because i have given the count based and the window size is 10 right so whatever is working it's working based on this window size and instead of count based you have time based also but mostly uh, count based is used time based is also used if you're dealing with some database and other but if you're dealing with the external rest services right then uh, the count based should work fine and then we saw permitted number of calls wait duration in open state five seconds so that after five seconds it is changing the state from open to half open then failure rate threshold 50 percent that also we saw so these are the important properties that you should be aware about and how to play with it based on your use case now the next thing we will see is retry right so retry is also very important so i will again show you the demo first so for retry i have created one endpoint so retry demo and again the concept is same because we are using the same resilience for the library right the name is there and fallback method is there and if you see the name this name i have been using here retry api demo maximum attempts is three and wait duration is one second right and metrics are enabled so this is important thing like maximum attempt three wait duration one second and so what we are telling to our retry method is like service if it is failing you can retry for three times with the wait duration of one second and if it still doesn't work after retrying three times right then you should give me the retry fallback option so i have put here one log statement inside retry demo because it will help us to uh, understand if really like three times call is happening or not right so i will trigger this one retry demo so i will go here so i will go to retry demo the service is working fine right and in the actuator also if i go to actuator so if you go to slash actuator right you can actually see all the endpoints and from here you can filter whatever you want like we have retry events so i will go to retry events you will see nothing has been retried right because service is working fine i am calling the service this service is up nothing has been retried success response is coming so this is a happy path scenario so now let's try to turn the service now. So if you see here, the log is also coming inside retry demo, inside retry demo, right? So I will go to the sample test and I will turn off the service, which is running on 9090 port. So if I will go here now, so you will be able to see this site can't be reached, right? So now one thing we have to see, check the log. So I will open the logs here. So I will just select clear buffer. Okay. So nothing is there now. So we will aware that three times the request is happening. So I will go to retry demo. Now I will hit it one time. So you will see the service is taking one, two, three seconds approximately. Then it went to retry option. And in the logs, you can able to see retry demo is happening three times. So basically retry API function is being called three times by resilience 4J because of this annotation, right? And after three times it will fail and go to this fallback method and this fallback method we are just saying retry fallback option so it can be anything based on your use case and now all the events are being tracked so if i will hit this you will be able to see three times the retry event happen on this service right so if if you see this is a service was called first time connection refused second time connection refused so this is really useful like i've also started putting blogs on hungrycoders.com so the benefit is it will have the embedded reel or either embedded youtube video right so for example if i go to tomcat versus netty right you will be able to see the embedded reel here and then you will be able to see all the things versus and if you go to the code level right so you will be able to see all the codes which i used in my reels also so if i go to clone expression and you will be able to see what are the breakdown of each field and how to set up in your project and what is the code and you can also copy the code from here right so basically intent is to provide everything at one place and the filtering is also easy for example if i want something related to interface here right so i can have this interface related blocks here and i can go inside i can read through the content do the code examples or if i am preparing for interview i can simply read some introduction right and i can also uh, see the video because i don't want to make it too lengthy it's like for the crisp blocks i want to do and it's for busy engineers like you so we don't have usually time from monday to friday right and if we are want to revise key topics we don't want to go inside too much details only we need is like important details right so that's the purpose so you can check out this website if you like and if you want to work with me you can go to join us 
and you can fill out this form and i will reach out to you if you want to be a part of this so if you found this video helpful don't forget to like subscribe and hit that bell icon for more programming content